Hey there, welcome to White Crow Roping episode 46. I believe it's number 46. It's been a while since I've made a video, so you probably noticed that if you've been paying attention, but I've been thinking a lot about what I'm doing and uh, haven't gotten to rope here in two or three weeks, it seems like, with the weather and I got sick. You know, if my voice is a little <clears throat> on, the, on the mend right now, which is okay, I'm getting better. It was just a bad cold I got for a few days and then it's been raining a lot. And uh, when I when I was roping last, I got on a roll. I was do, felt like I was putting it all together, doing awesome. And then uh, kind of hit a low spot when I went to a couple jackpots and didn't. On thinking about it now, I know kind of. I think I know what threw me off, but uh, <clears throat> it was kind of discouraging there for a minute. And I know there's highs and lows and everything, but pretty frustrating to hit a low or to get stuck in a spot where you got to catch four clean to win nine hundred dollars and uh, <laughs> <coughs> excuse me four clean to win nine hundred dollars and don't quite uh don't do it and kind of keep make the same mistake which you think you got over already but uh I've thought a lot about what my deal is, and uh, I think the slump I was in at the end when I got, got to rope last, which is like I say, been two, three weeks ago. I I done so much roping on the dummy and and roping steers, and felt like I was doing good, but once again I was not riding my horse, and. Uh, couple days it I got on some slower cattle and every steer I think I was I was letting my horse dive in too tight and then when I went to I try to pull him back and I was automatically sit, sitting back and everything elevated and then losing all my momentum and then when I tried to I was slapping my rope down again splitting the horns bigger in Dallas over and over and then if I got a quicker steer maybe or if if I actually got to ride and row my position right then I was in perfect spot where it was like roping the dummy it was like I'd done it so many times wrong that it was, I, I had to remember how to do it <laughs> and a couple times like I got in one steer ran pretty hard going right and got kind of missed the haze a little bit which was fine I mean and I had to you know go at it and ride and and throw a coal and it was like oh crap I caught him <laughs> it's like I've forgotten <laughs> I forgot what it felt like, and I, that might be exaggerating a little bit, but after that, those last couple of ropings, I came back here and on the dummy, I'm on my sled, and uh, I got my wife to drive around where I was just barely loping. My horse was wanting a long trot, lope, long trot, and I kept just making, he, for, at first, it was a fight to get him in his left lead, which I, I know he does that sometimes. He'll dive in his right lead and quarter away from him, and so you're like, here are the steer's horns right here, and he's trying to be come like this. Where, you, in order to cover the horns, you're having to hit him over the hit him over the ears. But I, I worked on that on the sled a couple of days. Boy, we that sucker had him hot. We got a couple of warm days there. The sun was shining, 60 degrees, and he uh, it was like he was man. It was like man, he's not fit at all. <laughs> much as I've been riding him that heat got him and he's getting hot but man when, when I finally got, whooped, got him in his left lead and and sat there in his spot and we just went around and around slowing down speed up just keep stay right there but all that time all that time fighting those slow steers for the last it'd been a week I guess just two or three times a week and then the two jackpots where I was just letting him I was letting him dictate the run and God bless that black horse. He's, he ride every jump and he's gonna make me more of a horseman than I thought I needed to be. <laughs> and uh, I talked to the guys that had him before and they, that's kind of what they told me. He said, you know, he's a handful, but 
when he works, he works. And I've had top guys tell me he'd be worth a lot of money. You now if he didn't buck, you know, <laughs> he's gonna make me something or break me, I guess. I mean, if he if he has athletic wise and speed and and handle, if he was a no holes horse, you know, didn't didn't get sour after a week or two off or two or three days off and buck every now and then that sucker could be worth 30,000 and I I'm not in a spot where I could buy him right now so I might find one that's a little more level headed like my gray horse was that I sold a little younger though is what I what I need to find it's not $30,000 but anyway the end of all this is that uh Um, basically go back to basics on my sled and and that helped a lot and once I did that then it started raining so I, I mean I don't have a I don't have a dry spot to pull it and then I got sick and <laughs> slowly work myself back into it this week and rope the I've been roping the dummy a bunch that's another thing I saw a video like yesterday last night it was a uh, Alan Bach talking about feeding your rope and I've seen so many people describe it this way and you know James Martinez kind of put it to me this way and I but I always resisted the idea that I didn't want to I didn't want to change because when I feed it's like I, it's always from here to here push it out and it comes around and Alan Bach showed in slow motion how it really is you're spinning your you're spinning your tip of that target and it comes out going forward that tip pulls it out and <sighs> I can play around and do that, you know, just playing with it on the ground, but for some reason I've resisted thinking that I had to change that, but I think I'm gonna, this week, you know, if I don't get to rope a lot of steers, over the next few weeks, month, two, I'm gonna ingrain that in me, like, basically learn it like Alan Box said, and, and, and uh, also, what's his name? Uh, up Ricky Green a lot of people you know they say it and, the, and they'll show it in slow motion but it, I never could put it together if that's how you know in the heat of the run it always looked to me like they were it was from here to here that where they're fed instead of from here to here I don't know if that makes any sense and I know that I'll be able to do it I need to buy some some fresh ropes and get the feel for it that way instead of like, this old fuzzy cactus I wrote 50 steers with it and uh Man, cactus, I could like, I sure like a rope deal. <laughs> I know I'm not, maybe not in the spot to make you the money and the fame and fortune that you need for something like that. But I'm dedicated. I'm gonna figure this out. And uh, with that, I'll make a video coming up shortly. I'll get back on a regular schedule. And <clears throat> I don't know if anyone's watching these right now, but somebody down the road might see one of these and and be able to go back in time and see the work it takes to improve and become good at something starting from a very low end where I started to where I may be right here but I'll be one day I'll be up here and then people might come back and and see see what it took so thanks for watching and I'll hopefully next week be back with another one adios